Hello. Okay, so maybe we can start. So today we are going to talk about some different things. So we are not talking about the theory today. We are talking about the practice in the machine learning. And I hope this tutorial will help you for your project. So if you were going to do a, a fourth credit project, you can use the, this library called Learning Based Java, which can make your life more easier, I hope. And yeah, and here's a reminder. So the homework five is due today, and then we also we are going to release the homework six. So enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so, okay, so as I say, the goal of this lecture is not going to talk about any other like models or something, but just trying to talk about how to use a machine learning in practice. So basically, I will going to describe a library that uh, made by one of my uh, group member called Learning Based Java. So we are going to talk about this library, so I hope at the end you will be able to use this library and also, th this, uh, for this introduction, we will give you a sense that how to use a machine learning technique in practice. So then you can write your own classifier for your own applications. And also, yeah, you will going to understand how features are important, of course. Okay, so, so here is just a quick reminder. So, as we know, basically, machine learning is basically I have a bunch of uh, data, and then I collect some training data, and I assume the data has some label, and the label is generated from, from some function of this data, right? So we have a data point x, we have a label f of x, and we, going to, we are going to use a machine learning technique to learn a mapping from x to f of x to approximate this mapping function. So basically, the x is represent the input, and the input can be, well, can be represented by a feature factor. So usually, we use a feature factor with like binary feature, or we can use a real value feature to represent this training data. And then we can learn the mapping, so then we can learn the mapping to map to a label. And in binary classification case, the label is one and minus one. And in multi-class classification, that f of x it can be like one to k. And also there are other cases that the regression or structure case, right? So, so today we are talking about basically focus on the text classification. So in text classification, the input is basically a document. <coughs> So it can be a sentence, can be a paragraph, or can be like a, a, an article. And then we, we have some label. So the label can be, for example, is like a span or not a span. It can be like this is a like sentiment analysis. This is a positive review or negative review. And basically, we will collect uh, several data, and then we will learn a classifier as a black box. So then when you... Uh, put the, this document into this black box, it will return you the label, right? So basically, that's what we have uh, learned so far. <coughs> so as I said, that there are several test uh, classification application that span detection, basically trying to learn if this span message or not. In sentiment classification, it basically means that we want to learn if it is a positive review or negative review. Also, like in the news category classification test, you want to learn that this news is a uh, political news or some other kind of news. So, so here is a question. So, if we have uh, this test classification black box, what else application you can imagine you can use? Any idea? It's just a brainstorming. So. Well, for example, you can, I can give you another example that if you are in a Facebook or in a Google and I have a several advertisement, I want to predict this advertisement is good or not, that people were going to click this link or not, you can also use this black box as a classifier to predict uh, it can be click or not. Okay, 
And well, I mean, maybe you can think about in your project that what else you can use that using this text classification black box. Anyway, so so basically today I'm going to show you how to write a text classification classifier using the LBZ Java. And the text I'm going to use for as an example is a, a span classification example. So basically we want to classify if a message is a span or not a span, which is called hand. Okay, so so be, so let me begin to talk about what is uh, learning based Java. So learning based Java is a, a script language. So basically, borrow most of the feature from Java. So it look like the Java language. Uh, it look like the Java, and also it can be a code Java library and can be also used in Java. And in this language, we're trying to model the language of learning. So it supports several different learning models, like SVN, Perceptron, Naive Base, and all the others. And also in this language, we are going to give some high levels uh, specification of that what the model we are going to use, what the data structure we are going to use, or some of the other. And although also this language supports you to add any features, and also you can add some constraints. So the constraint here means that I can say if I see this 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 feature, and then I always return positive, and or I always return negative. And also, it allows you to use different learning algorithms. So, the key idea here is, as a in any language, you basically write down several functions or up or class, right? So here, basically, you the learning based Java will help you to build a, a Java class such that you give in the input as a, any object, and then it can return you the label. And you are going to learn this function mapping during the compile time. So in the compile time, you basically provide the learning based Java compiler a bunch of training data. And then the learning based Java compiler will go into use this training data to com compile and then generate a classifier for you. So then you can use this classifier in your application. Okay, so well, I guess let me show you some demo. Then you can know what I'm going to say. So this demo is uh, from from this web page. So you can also go into this web page. There is a tutorial for the learning based Java, and also you can download the code I'm going to use today. And also there are Java API like here that. Well, if you are familiar with Java, then you, I, I, I believe you've seen this before. That you basically, there is uh, several functionality you can use of this library. And also there is a Java document basically tell you that how to use this library and then how to write down your code and how to compile. But let's, I want to show you that this is basically all the file I have in this example. So we have a data. So this data basically contains all the training data, all the training document with a label that this message is a span or a hand. And we have a LBJ file. So this is a file I'm going to talk about. So we are going to write the LB Java script here to basically describe what the learning algorithm we are going to use and what parameter or all the stuff. And and then this is a library that we're going to include. And well, there are some, this is some command line script to help you to run the code. So it's not important. And, and we also need to write down some Java code. This is some simple Java code basically to support the LB Java library so that you can, well, you can use it as a Java. So, so the key idea here is that once we have this, uh, LB Java script, then we can run a compiler to compile the code. So for example, here I can compile the LBJ and then go into compile the code. 
So you are going to generate some Java code and based on the LB Java, uh, based on the LB Java file. And then those Java code will basically generate a Java class. And then, and then you will automatically go into look at the copers and use the label training data to train the model. And then finally you will do some prediction. So this is a final accuracy we have. Okay. And and once you have this, and basically we can write down our own application. I will show you how to do that later. And then we can run this application. So now basically I have a span detector. Then I can type some message here and see if it is a span or not. So I got some example from my mailbox, like this one. Yeah, you say it is spent. So the the message say it's me. At, I don't know how to pronounce this name. Adarina, you remember me from Facebook? Of course I don't. So it is a spend. And there's another one that someone say you are going to send me million dollars. <laughs> well, I guess I'm not so lucky. So also a spend. And so also this is a. Uh, message from the Kara today. He said there is some important dates for November. And oh, it's the span. <laughs> <laughs> OK. I thought it's the hand. Let's try another one. Let, so this is, OK. Now he said all oh, span. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you can guess something is hand. Anyway, this is a learning algorithm, so you can make mistake. Well, so so. So basically, another thing I want to show you is that although it seems that it is a complicated ca uh, task, but you see, I only need to write down like 35 lines of uh, LBJ code and a few lines of a uh, Java code. Then I can get the span detector. Good. Oh, you need to collect the training data. So in this case, there is a corpus that is a uh, I mean, it is a uh, open source corpus, so people can just download the data. Yeah, but for for other tests, you need to think about how to get the training data. Okay, so so you see, basically, I just need to write down around like two hundred lines of code, and I can get a span detector. Although the performance is not good, <laughs> but we can see if we can improve it later. Okay, so let's back to. Uh, sorry? Oh, you will see in a minute. Good. Right, so. So the key idea here, is why, so you, you might think about why we only need to write down 200 lines of code. It's much maybe smaller than your homework two or homework three, right? So the key idea here is because we already have some abstract way to, uh, to basically <coughs> describe these things. So then we can just call a library to, 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 to do the things. So, so now we are thinking about, so, so the, uh, right, so, the key message here is that I'm going to talk about how to write this learning-based Java program. And then you will see in a minute that this is basically like the describing language. So you can just look at the things and you know what are going on. And but before that, I want to, to have a brainstorming. So if you want to build the span detector that I have now, and what kind of uh, class or object you need to implement. Any idea? So like the features, right? Yeah. yeah, so you need to implement some kind of feature. Yeah, and also as you say, you need to specify what is the model we are used in, in this black box. And what else do we need to implement? <coughs> Uh, any idea? Any guessing? 
Yeah, good idea. So we need to have a container of the data so then we can represent these, basically these documents and then pass this document to our classifier. And also, any other thing we need to implement? Along with that, we also need to have a reader so we can read the data from the disk, right? Well, I think there's still one thing missing here. So we say we are going to map the data to a label. So we also need to have a representation of label, right? So, so label this basically is also a function that I give you this training data, you output me a label, right? And feature is also a function that I give you those training data, you output me a features, right? So basically we need to implement all these things. Okay, so this is a, it's well, this might be a better example. So that this is just what I say. So basically, we when we want to build a classifier, we need those things. So we need to have those annotated document as a training data. We need to have a representation of a feature of the label and of the data, and also we need to specify our learning algorithm. And well, here basically we're talking about the supervised learning. So Although I think the package also supports some kind of other things. So, so here is a LBJ Java script. So you can see that in this script, basically what we do is we, so basically the red, uh, the red word here are those uh, keywords. And the black word here is the thing that we need to specify or we need to, we need to implement. And, and you can see the big idea here is basically we are going to say we are trying to learn a test classifier and I give you a document, it's kind of like a Java object and you are going to learn the text label and using some features. And then you're going to use this document reader to read some, uh, some training data so then you can train the model using the the thing in this directory. And then the algorithm we are going to use is that uh, sparse average perceptron with this parameter, and we want to go through data five rounds, and then we want to do some testing or do some thing on this test data to see what, our, what is our performance. So to do this, we need to implement several things. First, we need to, well, this is just a definition. This is the name of this classifier. And we also need to implement this document class, right? So this will become a container to contain the data. So then we can pass this thing to the LB Java, and LB Java will be able to extra feature or label from it. And we also need to define how to do the how to map the document to a label. We need to define the features, as I say, and then we also need to implement this document reader. So then we can read the data. So later I'm going to show you how to implement these things. And and then the LB Java have a I think have a seven or eight different kinds of a classifier. So you can if you want to change the classifier, you can just easily change here. You can change the for example, you can change this to like using naive base or other classifier. So then you can get using I mean you can use a different model here. And also there are several ways to do the testing. So I will show you later. Okay, so. Yeah, I can, we'll show you later. Okay, so uh, now let me basically uh, let me go basically go through. So, so this is a jo uh, LB Java file we need to implement. And then we also, as I said, we also need to implement several Java files. So here I'm going to uh, let you look at what is a Java file we need to implement. So basically this is a LB Java file I just showed you before. And, and as I said, we need to have a container to contain this data, right? So this is my data container. So this is a, so the container can be any Java object. 
So you can just implement this Java class called documents. And the document basically uh, store user, I mean, I mean, basically the document is a list of words. So you just store this list of words, and you have a label basically stored in this string. And also you have a ID of this document. Is it time up? <laughs> yeah, so, so, so basically here is a initial function to initial this document. So basically I give you a file, you read the file, and then you store all the words in the file to this array, and that's it. And also we identify the label and store the label here. And well, I guess this is an easy Java file, right? So you basically have support two function that when I call get words, you return me a list of words. When you call me get label, then I need to return a label. And you, I will go into use this functionality later in my LBJ Java script. Okay, so, well, this one is also boring. So this one is basically a document reader. So document reader is a, a Java file that can help you to read uh, annotated training data. So the key thing here is that the document reader need to implement this parser interface. So in this parser interface, it has a function called next. So this function basically help. Uh, so the LB Java will go into call this next function. So whenever you call this next function, you need to return uh, LB. Uh, uh, you need to return any object. You need to, need to return an object that, in this case, you need to return a document. And if you are going to the end of a file list, then you just return null. Okay. So so basically, this data reader will help the LB Java to read the training data. So once you have this, then basically you already have two things. You already have an imp implementation, a container of your data, and also you have a data reader to help you to read the, read the training and test data from the file system. It's a good, good answer, a good question. So, if you are going to use the same structure, same data structure as I have in a span filter, a span filter example, then you don't need to re-implement all these things, right? But if you have a data represent in different way in the file system, then you need to have a different reader to read the file. And this reader is in the library. So this reader is in the library. So. Well, I, I, actually, I'm not sure, but at least in the tutorial, so you can copy it to use it. Yeah, yeah. In fact, I will show you uh, two and th uh, two, maybe two different other reader for other application later. But most of them are the same, so it's basically in most cases you don't need to modify a lot of things. Okay, so so basically, this is a uh, two Java function you need to implement. And mm -hmm. uh, you mean why we want to put them into two different classes? Well, the semantics are different, right? So one is a document. Document is an object that an uh, article. Another thing is a uh, parser that trying to help you to read things from a file system and generate a document. Oh no, I'm not going to give a document to a parser. I'm going to give just a, like, a directory path to a parser. And then you will read the thing from the file system and generate a document. Uh, the output would be a list of documents. Documents, yeah. But in the case of this span. Oh no, so yeah, let me show you again. So, yeah, so a document is an uh, object that contains a list of words, right? So this document reader will 
generates several documents, and each of them has a list of words. But, okay, so let me show you what is a data look like, maybe. So this is a data I'm going to have here. So I have uh, several documents, and this is an uh, old document that uh, of a hand. And also I have uh, documents of span. Okay, so basically the document is, each document will contain one, this text file. And the document reader will go into read all the things in this directory. And at each time when I call next, it will generate a document to contain one, one text file. Yeah. Yeah, in this case, one document is one example. Okay. Right, so, so basically now, well now we can talk about the feature and the label, right? So, so, oh, is some problem? Yeah, some problem, please. So, so now we can go back to see our LB Java code. So now we have uh, this document container, right? So each document basically is a representation of a text message. message. And then once we have this object, we can define our label and feature, right? So, so a label, based, the definition of label basically is that I give you a, a, any object and then you return a string that represented the label. So as we, we already implement this get label function in the documents, so you can easily just call get label, so, so this will return you a string represent this document is a span or, or a hem, right? And and then we can also define some feature here. So the feature is basically, again, that we using we use a function we have implemented that get words to get a list of a word from the documents. And then we can extract some feature based on these words, right? So for example, here, the word feature basically, it go to all the word in this document. And for each word, you will find a feature to to tell you basically if this word is con contained in the parameter. I don't know, is this word contained in these documents? And also we have a feature called background feature. So basically you return a combination of this word and the word next to you, and then you can generate a background feature. Okay? So as you can see that both the feature and the and the label are basically using the same semantic. So the idea, so basically just I input a document or input any object and then you trying to extract some feature or label from this object and then you return, return a string or return a list of string. So one more thing here. So you see here I put a percentage, percentage sign here. So so this semantics means that I want to generate a list of a word as a feature. So this is something that in the Python you have a, you have a keyword called yard. So whenever you call that keyword, you will put one thing into an array. So this is a thing. When you call sense, you will basically get this word from, from the document and then generate a feature based on that. So in the end, this will generate a list of a feature which represent all the words in the document. <coughs> mm -hmm. The feature is basically just a word, right? So, so basically you go over all the words in the document and then you basically generate a list of feature to represent that if this word contained in these documents. Yeah, so, so it's the same thing that in the first stage we, we talk about the, the batch game. Right, so you generate several feature 
based on if this uh, if this character this this letter is in this string, you know this name string. So it's the same thing. So so if you have uh, like two hundred uh, maybe twenty thousand words in in your feature space, and this will basically generate some of the feature based on if this doc is words in this document or not. Okay. So of course you can use you can uh, you can consider different feature here, and also you can implement other features. And yeah, so so basically that is uh, all the thing we need here. Right, so anyone want to try to have other features? No? I can, we can try, so, so let me show you that how to add another feature. So basically, for example, we can add a feature, basically uh, show that how many words in the, we can add a feature show basically how many words in this sentence. So what we can do is we can say, uh, number of words. And we can have right, so so for example here I can add the features basically put the number of words in this document as a feature, right? And once you have this, then you, you can come here to register your feature here. So you can have this. And then you can recompile your file. And this time, you see here, it has a one more, to generate one more class file to, to, to basically represent this feature. And then you are going to Regenerate, regenerate your example and then and then retrain the model and hopefully you can get better accuracy by adding more features so a good thing here is that you also implement several functionalities to help you to add feature more easily for example I can con concatenate two features together for example I can have this so this basically means that I will have a feature that it will on only when the number of words is like equal to three, and also the word, for example, span is inside my feature span. So so this will become the concatenation of a two feature. So so you can have this, and then again you can recompile and do the thing again. So. So, so for that, you can easily to implement like the degree two polynomial feature to to put into this uh, classifier, right? So, another good thing is that if you have some feature template, you can just copy the feature tem template to different applications, so you can just use it. You don't need to re implement. It. Oh yeah, you get better now. See. Yeah, uh, because we have a, you see we have a lexical feature basically represent if this word in this document. But each document only have a, a few words. So the feature would be very, very sparse. So using sparse implementation would get faster. Right. So there is another question that can we use different classifier here? Uh, of course, we can try. So if we don't want to use the average perception, we can use other, for example, we can try to use a naive base. Then, then again, you change your classifier, you can recompile again. And you see, this time we are not going to regenerate the data. The reason is that because even you're using different classifier, you can use the same feature representation if you don't change the feature. So you can save your time to regenerate. Okay, so you can see now you after we use the knife base, it's good. Well, it's a little worse result. Yeah, but basically this show you that you can easily change your uh, classifier to do several different things. 
And also, it supports other functionality. For example, instead of uh, test our performance on the test data, we can do cost validation. So for example, I can do five-fold cost validation by just simply call, we say we want to do this. And then, and then in these times, when you compile, you basically do a five-fold cost validation. So I change the wrong to just five wrong because, and then you see, it, got, it tell you all the accuracy of each sub uh, subset, and also give you a summary of the result. So this gives you that 95 confidence interval after five rounds is uh, this number plus minus this. Okay, so, well, now I think you are thinking about if you have this, you don't need to do your homework three. <laughs> right, and after you finish the five code validation, you will generate, it will retrain the model on the whole data. So then you will generate a model so you can use later. Okay, and and of course I only cover a small portion of this. So you, there are other functionality. For example, you can do that like feature selection to remove some feature that appear seldom in your test data. Or you can do, or you can do other kind of a testing, but I don't want to cover here. Okay, so so, there, so so the total feature will be total number of words appear in all the documents. Right, so you will have a very, very large ar feature array. And for each document, because it has only a few words, right, so you only have a several, maybe a few one in this big feature array. So that will be your feature. Mm -hmm. So I guess you mean right. Here. Yes, if you add more thing here, the feature will be increased. But you, this is not just one feature, it's a template of feature. So each of these features will generate several, a lot of features. Right? And LBZ will concatenate all these feature factor to a big feature factor. And that will be your final feature factor. Yeah. Yeah. And, and in fact, this is, uh, I guess it is the uh, most difficult thing when you implement any machine learning algorithm to basically play with this feature template. And, and I guess, and uh, I'll be basically do this for you. Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about is once we have this classifier, how we r write a application to use this classifier. So again, this is easy, so so this is an uh, application that I just show you that I can type something and return me it is a span or not. So, so what we are doing here is that the LBZ Java help you to generate this Java class called span classifier. So the name here is basically the name you put in the LBZ Java script. And, and then you just, the, the thing you need to do is just new uh, instance of this class. So then you have this, up, this span classifier object, and then in your code, uh, here when you want to do a class, classification here, you basically just call a function called discrete value, and then you give, you, give in the document representation and you will return you the label. So this is what I say that basically a learning model is basically a function that I give you an object and then you return me a label, right? So here basically you just need to get this Java object and then you call this function and give you the input object and it will return you the label. 
And the rest of the thing is basically to generate this input object from the command line, from the console. So basically, we have a scanner to let user to type things into a console, and then you get those words, and then you generate a document based on these words, and then you put in into this uh, classifier, and then you can get the label. OK, so is that easy? Well, uh, so in fact, the only two important line here is this one is this uh, in instantiate or object and then the prediction. Right. So if your application not from command tongues or do other things, you can just write other stuff. Right. But, okay, but so you're, you'll still have to produce this Java program each right. time in addition to this script. Right, but the, well, so LBJ Java help you to write a classifier class, yeah. but you need to write down your own script to use it. Right? Yeah. Right. So, so again, if you just want to have the same functionality that people can type in the command console, you can just use this script by replacing this classifier. Right. But if you want to do other application, you need to write on your own script, okay. own Java file. Okay, so basically, here are all the things I just introduced. Right, so now we can back to these things. So you, I think you already know that all those black things. And so when you have a new application, what you need to do is just to write your own Java file for all these black things, and then you can replace it to a new thing. Okay. So now I want to show you t t uh, maybe one more application that using this black box classification. So one is a sentiment analysis. So the sentiment analysis, as I say, is that I give you two review, and I want to know which one is more positive. So that in this case, well, which one is the more positive review? Yeah, the right one. And basically, you say, well, since good, then this one has some complaint, right? So, the question is, how do you know why this is better than this? Is because some of the word here suggests you that this is a better review. So you can also use this as a feature to train your classifier. And then this is another example that I also talked before that I give you a message, and then I ask you. Uh, what is the category of this message? So, for example, here I guess it's something related to programming. So, so this is in this computer graphics uh, thread. Uh, anyway, so 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 this is another another classification task. So, the thing I'm going to say is that although. Those things are pretty different. They are totally different tasks. But you, if you think about what is a different in terms of learning, they are actually very basically the same task, right? So, so again, here's another brainstorming. So, what is the thing we don't need to re-implement here? What is the thing we can borrow from our span filter example? Everything. Well, almost everything, right? Yeah, label basically the same thing. Yeah, label just a string, so you can follow the same implementation. And also, I guess you want to say the feature is also the same thing. So the feature here basically also the words, the background, and all other things. And right, so so in fact, I can show you the the other code. Mm-hmm. 
So this is a tutorial code that I download from the website I show you. And then now we can look at, uh, for example, we can look at uh, this is a LB Java code for the sentiment analysis. And you can see that we basically have the same thing that we have the same feature description here. And we have the same level distribu uh, description here. And but a little bit different things here, we have a different data reader because the file is putting on di different way, so you need to have a new reader. But you can have the same document representation because you can also put all the thing into, well, you can consider, again, that the sentiment analysis is a text that map a list of a word to a label, right? So you can have the same document representation. And, well, then here you can try different uh, classifier and I guess they try this and find that this is a better one. So if you look at another one, that uh, news group classifier, you will see, basically, again, you see almost the same thing. We have the same definition of the feature and label and documents. But the only difference is we have a different, or we even have the same document reader. right? So basically, you follow all the things here. And all the diff all, uh, and the only difference is that now you give the black box a different training data, so you will train a different classifier. Are you using the same uh, What do you mean by that? So isn't the, the task here a multi-class class? Uh, yes, yes. So how, how oh, do you do the work? So I guess it, so that's why it has a sparse network learner. Okay. So this thing will help you to learn the multi-class classifier. Okay. Yeah. Right, so So the last example is uh, the batch classifier. So remember in the first day of the lesson, we have uh, this batch game. So I have a string of a name, and then we want to identify the, 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 the sign put in the batch is positive or negative. And then we can use all the character in the string as a feature. So here, we basically loop over all the character in the string, and then generate a feature based on each character. So that's what I described before, and then, and then, and then you have a uh, two different label, positive and negative, based on the training data. So if you implement the thing using LB Java, it's quite easy. And then again, most of things are the same as we described before. The only difference is that you basically define a new feature, new label, and new data reader, and replace them with the original one. And then you can have a classifier to do this. OK. Yeah, so basically, you can try this uh, after class, if you want to redo your homework too. And <laughs> to see is that make the homework too more easier. Right, so, so I guess today we, after the class, you um, know how to use the LB Java, and also you can use this to try your own class, uh, you can build out your own classifier to work on your project. And, and again, the idea here is that we, this can help you to identify wh what is the key difference between two or three different learning classification tasks. And you see most of the time, the difference is just a representation of the training data and the representation of your label and feature. So you can try to reuse all of the things you have and replace the thing you need to change, and then you can get a new classifier for your own task. Yeah, so any questions?
Right, that's a good question. So, so features, there are several ways to do feature selection. One is that you can train a model, right, and then you can identify those feature, a small feature weight, means that those features are not important, then you can remove it. But there is another way that is more simple, is just go through all the, all the data in your training sample, and if this feature only active once or twice, then it's likely that it is not important, then you can just remove it. <laughs> Just do the counting, right? Right. Well, that if you have uh, a lot of combination, uh, degree four, degree five, I guess it will take forever on running this script. So you are trying to enumerate and trying to delete some <coughs> some things. But yeah, but of course there are some trick to doing this because you can guess that if these two are seldom appear in the training corpus, then you don't need to actually expand it. Right? So so you can still do something. Yeah, so, well, so I guess I covered all the things I want to say today. So you can, well, you can try this of your own and this one? No, this will not cover in the exam. <laughs> we are not going to give you a plan as you to write down the code here. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. <laughs> yep. Uh, good questions. Uh, yeah, you can you can deal with a continuous feature. So there is a semantic called real. Basically, you can define your real value features. So I can just uh, input a table that has continuous features, and we will just treat it as a test uh, file. Uh, so although today I only talk about test classification, but of course you can use this library for other application. Right? So in other application, maybe you have a real feature, you just put. Okay, I mean, you use the same semantic, you just say, I have a feature that real value, that this, 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 and then you will be use that feature to train your model. Right. I have a doubt about the support mechanism. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um,